On August 23, 1985, the supernatural comedy Teen Wolf starring Michael J. Fox was released in theaters. The film follows Scott Howard, who one day discovers that he's a werewolf just like his dad, and gets a lot of popularity at school for it. 26 years later, MTV would premiere the TV series of the same name, meant to be a loose adaptation. But let's be real here, guys. This is what we would call an in-name only adaptation, as the only things that would stay similar to the film would be the main character is a teenage werewolf, a couple of same first names, and the title. Teen Wolf would instead follow Scott McCall, an average teenager who is one day attacked and starts becoming a werewolf. Throughout the town of Beacon Hills, he meets and discovers more supernatural shapeshifters as well as other people connected to the supernatural. Allison Argent is from a family of werewolf hunters. Derek Hale is a werewolf as well, only instead of being bit, he was born one. Jackson Whitmore gets bit and at first becomes a canima before becoming a werewolf. Deaton, who turns out to be a druid. Lydia Martin discovers she's a banshee. Kira Yukimura, a kitsune. Malia Tate, a were coyote. Liam Dunbar, who Scott accidentally bites and turns into a werewolf. A whole bunch of people who are chimeras. And Styles. This is the only main character who stays human the whole time. Good for him. Teen Wolf ended in 2017 with six seasons and 100 episodes. And if I'm being honest, it didn't leave too big of a cultural impact. I don't see any TV shows that are copying its trends or ideas, as it was airing during the paranormal romance craze of the 2010s. But it did leave some lasting marks besides giving some of its stars a boost. Season 3B is considered one of the greatest seasons of any fantasy show. If you only watch one season of Teen Wolf, watch season 3. I promise, it's really good. And this scene... Where are you getting your juice? My mom does all the grocery shopping. Then there are the ships, both in the canon and fan incense. Scott and Allison were really well liked, as were Scott and Kira. Styles and Lydia had a pretty good slow burn romance, and someone likes Malia and Styles, even though it's heavily criticized. Jackson and Lydia had a decent following, as well as Isaac and Allison. Everyone kind of just ignores that Malia and Scott get together in the last season, so let's all agree that they were a bad couple. Then we get to the Fanon ones. Erica and Boyd are still fan favorites years later, as are Scott and Isaac. Yes, there is poly shipping between the two and Allison, and that was the only solution to what everyone calls a love triangle, but isn't actually a love triangle. Liam and Theo were a last minute entry into shipping, and they got pretty popular pretty fast. While it's not as big as the others, people did ship Scott and Styles. The only fanon ship everyone agreed on was Melissa and Sheriff Stolinski. And after one scene in season four, people shipped Malia and Kira. This fandom needs more femslash. But by far the most popular and well-known ship to come out of this fandom is Styles Stolinski and Derek Hale, otherwise known as Steric. Styles is Scott's best friend and is the heart of the show while Derek is a werewolf whose family was killed in a fire prior to the start of the series. These two blew up big, and it's something that has far outlasted the show. On AO3, there is almost seven times more fanfiction for Derek and Styles than there is for the second most written ship in the Teen Wolf tag. For perspective, Death Steel is only about four times higher than the second most written ship in the Supernatural tag, and that ship is the most written for ship on AO3. Destiel is about 40% of the Supernatural tag, while Steric is 52% of the Teen Wolf tag. It's got almost 70,000 works and has more fic than Stucky, Stony, Dreary, Ineffable Husbands, and Clants. That last one's actually not surprising, as I think we've all agreed that Voltron was a mistake. A lot of people shipped Steric, myself included. And one day, a few years after Teen Wolf ended, I missed them. So I watched a compilation on YouTube and I discovered two things. One, Teen Wolf is funnier than I remember. Like, this is literally how they introduced Derek. If he did, I hope he left my inhaler. Those things are like 80 bucks. Peak comedy right here. And two, I no longer ship Steric. 
This was almost two years ago, but when the first trailer for the Teen Wolf movie was released, it reminded me of everything Teen Wolf. And with everyone yelling, this is how Steric can still win, despite Dylan O'Brien not even being in the movie, it made me want to rewatch Teen Wolf and explore what Steric was in the show and in the fan base. So let's go over the Steric that is presented in the Teen Wolf show. And I'm literally going over as little as possible outside of Steric itself. If you want to watch a video that goes over most of the other aspects of this show, I will put a link in the card. This is just about Styles and Derek. Understood? Let's start with season one. Styles and Scott are out in the woods when Derek finds them and tells them that they're trespassing. When he leaves, Styles tells Scott that he recognizes him since his family had died in a fire a few years earlier. When Derek reveals himself as a werewolf to Scott, Styles decides that they need to investigate Derek and eventually find one half of a body on Derek's property. When Derek is in the back of the police car after being arrested, Styles enters and Derek emphasizes how bad things will be if Scott plays in the lacrosse game that night. The next time Derek and Styles meet is in the episode Magic Bullet which I am 100% sure is when people started to ship Steric. I'm not saying that people weren't shipping them before this episode, but this is probably where it really started to take off. Derek gets shot with a specific Wolfsbane bullet and needs Scott's help. Scott has Styles take the injured Derek while he tries to find the bullet at the Argents. While he's doing that, the Styles and Derek dynamic really starts to form here. You really get a clear idea of how they're going to interact and feel about one another, they hate each other. Styles is annoyed by Derek's whole existence, while Derek can't deal with any joke that comes out of Styles' mouth. Now, aside from the fact that a lot of people like bickering old married couples, another reason Steric took off this episode is the more physical aspect. Derek grabbing Styles and getting up in his face. Who hasn't chipped something where that happens? Then there's the scene where Derek is writhing on the floor in pain while shirtless, and Styles' face can be interpreted as him finding Derek hot in this moment. Which isn't a wrong interpretation, even I know Tyler Hecklin is hot. After that, there's not an iconic Steric episode, but an iconic Steric line. Don't be such a sour wolf. A lot of ships have lines or quotes that people associate with the pairing. So what, you, you like him better or something? Dean and I do share a more profound bond. I wasn't going to mention it. So you think I'm hot then? We did it. We are a good team. And this quickly became Sterics. There were, and still are, t-shirts sold with this line on them or some variation. Then we get to Wolf Spain, and if Magic Bullet is what truly started Steric, then this episode is what solidified Steric. This was not going to be a short-lived ship, and it's all thanks to this episode. Derek is on the run from the cops after Scott and Styles ended up accidentally framing him for murder. He sneaks into Styles' house at one point, much to Styles' surprise. Styles' dad calls him and he has to play it off as if he didn't just find Derek Hale wanted criminal in his room. And after Styles returns to his room comes the exact moment Steric became a mainstay of Teen Wolf fandom. So, oh, uh, just say one word. Oh, what, you mean like, hey, Dad, Derek Hale's in my room. Bring your gun? So people kind of love it when one character pushes another against a wall somewhat aggressively and gets all in their face. It ends up showing off the chemistry that the actors have and when no one else has been doing any wall slamming, people take it and run with it. A little bit more conversation as Styles has an idea as to how to figure out how the Alpha texted Allison. Then we get the My Cousin Miguel scene, which continues the trend of this being the Steric episode. Is it a good or bad sign that it's so early in the show? Styles decides to kind of pimp out Derek to Danny so that he can get Danny to hack back to where the Alpha had sent the message to Allison, having Derek take his shirt off multiple times so that Danny can ogle him. They get the location and Styles has a convo with Scott about missing the game. Derek is at least showing that he pays enough attention to Styles to know that missing the game is gonna suck for him, but he's not that overly concerned for him. By the way, one more thing. Yeah. Whoa! God, what the hell is- You know what that was for. Go. Go! 
Styles then heads into the hospital and informs Derek that his uncle Peter is missing. Derek realizes that Peter is the Alpha and tells Styles to get out of there. Derek then comes in and rescues Styles. And that's it for big Steric moments for the rest of the season. There's some small stuff here and there, like Peter making Styles tell him where Derek is and Styles telling his dad that he knows Derek more than he and Scott let on, but there's no interactions. Season 2's Shape Shifted has Derek needing to break newly formed werewolf Isaac Leahy out of jail and needs Styles' help to do it. Derek plans to distract the guard and Styles asks how he'll do it. When Derek just stays silent, Styles asks if he has any other ideas and Derek says he's thinking about punching Styles in the face. Derek is able to distract the officer by flirting, but when Isaac is out of control, Derek has to step in and save Styles. In Abomination, we have another series of iconic Steric moments where Derek has Erica bring Styles to him when they are attacked by the Canima. Derek gets paralyzed by it and ends up falling in the school pool, Styles having to jump in to save him from drowning. But they can't get out because the Canima is stalking the pool, so Styles is forced to hold up Derek in eight feet of water for an extended period of time. Derek establishes that he doesn't trust Styles and believes he only saved him to fight off the Canima when the paralysis wears off. I am not trying to re-say that word. I can't actually say it. Styles does end up dropping Derek to grab his phone and try and call Scott for help, but it doesn't work and he has to save Derek again. Scott eventually arrives and is able to save them. Then we get to Fury, which a lot of shipping comes from this episode. They find out that a guy named Matt is controlling the Canima and traps the main guys in the police station. Derek is then paralyzed by the Canima and falls to the ground. Matt then has the Canima paralyze Styles, who falls right on top of Derek. Derek wants Styles off of him, but Matt says, Oh, I don't know, Derek. I think you two make a pretty good pair. This man has never seen them interact, aside from maybe through the Canima in the pool, so this is probably just a nod to the shippers. They are then forced to lie next to each other till Matt is stopped, and then that's it for the rest of the season. We don't even get a mention by either of them. All right, best season of the whole show time. Derek and Styles meet again when Scott gets a tattoo and it immediately disappears. So he talks to Derek about fixing that. Derek needs Styles to hold down Scott while he lights his arm on fire. Chaos Rising, they interact for a little bit, including two of the fandom's favorite moments. What? Here, I was robbed, but it probably won't take long to find out. How long? It's the internet, Derek. <laughs> Okay, minutes. And another when they have to plan ways to get into the bank vault to break out Boyd and Erica. Derek says he can punch through the wall and Styles taunt him till Derek does this. Punch through solid <laughs> Ah! I'm telling you guys, this show is peak comedy. He is also annoyed when Styles seems to assume he'll come for the rescue. In current, Styles comforts Derek after Boyd is killed. Visionary is then one of the more sterky episodes of the season, despite Derek and Styles not interacting at all. Styles is looking for Derek at his loft, and while there, Peter tells Styles why Derek's werewolf eyes are blue instead of the usual yellow. Derek has blue eyes because it means that a werewolf took an innocent life, and Derek did some dumb shit that led to him ending up killing his high school girlfriend. Styles feels like Peter was an unreliable narrator and tells Derek's sister Cora that if he wants the truth, he might end up having to ask Derek about it. Styles would never ask Derek about this. The overlooked Jennifer turns out to be the secret villain of the season and tries to convince Derek that Scott and Styles are lying about her sacrificing people. Styles is extremely anxious about Jennifer on the verge of sacrificing his dad and takes it out on Derek. In Alpha Pack, Derek is unconscious in the elevator and Styles tries to wake him up. He repeatedly slaps him and is about to go for the punch when Derek wakes up and grabs his arm right before he can do so. Styles fills him in on everything and says that they have to get him out of there, and that's the last time Styles and Derek interact till the season finale. So is there no Steric for the rest of season three? Well, there's a little bit. In Riddled, when Styles goes missing as he's now possessed by the Nogitsune, Scott calls everyone, including Derek, to try and find him. Derek then teaches Scott about chemo signals so he can sense what Styles was feeling while he was at the hospital. After they find Styles, Derek jumpstarts Styles' Jeep and Aiden tells him how Styles thought he was the one who wrote the message to kill Kira. Derek asks if he thinks You think Styles, skinny, defenseless Styles, 
is the Nagitsune. And questions why the Nagitsune would possess him and not someone with more power. He then has Kira show him everything that happened when she was kidnapped and puts together that the Nagistane wanted to use Kira's lightning powers to possess Styles. And then he talks to Scott in the hospital outside of Styles' room. So this is probably the most steric heavy episode for the second half of the season and all steric moments after pretty much follow the same idea. Derek trying to figure out what to do about the Nagitsune that's possessing Styles. Once we get everything sorted out and Styles is no longer possessed by the new Gitsune, we have a scene of Styles and Derek alone in the locker room. He tells Styles that he had a dream where hunters who had previously caught him broke into his apartment. He assumes they're after Korra, but they're not when they're attacked by Kate Argent. Styles asks why Derek is so freaked out if it's just a dream, and Derek says it's because he doesn't remember waking up. He then checks Styles' hand to see that he has extra fingers and wakes up to find that the dream is the reality. And now we get into Derek's last season before he would go on to be Superman. So Styles and the rest of the pack go down to Mexico to try and get Derek back from the group of hunters, only to learn that it was actually Kate Argent who took him. In true Styles fashion, he lists the reason why they shouldn't want Derek. All right, come on, just give us Derek. You don't want him anyway. Haven't you noticed what a downer he is? No sense of humor, poor conversationalist. Just come on, take the money. It's like me and my siblings. Whenever one of us isn't there, we still insult them and then still insult them to their face. <laughs> Styles then tells Scott to get Derek when the Jeep breaks down in the middle of the desert, and when he finds Derek, he's a teenager again. 117 is the final Steric episode of the show and is the last time they interact alone in the whole series. Derek is unconscious till they get back to Beacon Hills and has lost all of his memories from after he was 17 which also included his entire family dying. Scott covers it up and tells him that his family is fine, and we see that Derek and Styles act exactly the same even when Derek is a teenager. And who's he? Who are you? Oh, we're the guys keeping you out of jail. Scott has Styles take him back to his house where they'll wait for Scott to get back from talking to Peter. They then recreate a scene from season one. What's your name? Miguel. Yeah. It's by my cousin Miguel from Mexico, so. The fandom ran with this scene. Derek finds out from Scott's dad what actually happened to his family and... Okay, I didn't lie. I omitted certain truths. Yeah, they also ran with this scene as well. Honestly, you might as well call all of their scenes together in this episode Wolfsbane 2.0. Derek no longer trusts Styles and runs off with Kate when she arrives. So Steric's a little light again this season. In Orphan, Derek and Styles have to keep someone down, and Styles reacts when Derek says he's low on werewolf strength and is there when Lydia reveals that Derek might die. In A Promise to the Dead, Derek takes Styles to his apartment where Scott was kidnapped. And that's it between episode two and the season finale. The season finale, Smoke and Mirrors, Styles and Derek question who the other is bringing to Mexico to save Scott. In the back of the van on the way there, Styles and Derek coach Liam and try to get him to control himself on the full moon. They bicker over what mantra to use till Styles lands on one for Liam and they get to where Kate is holding Scott with everything intact. Then Derek is attacked by a berserker and starts bleeding out. He tells Styles to go save Scott, and Styles herds everyone inside of the temple. Outside, Derek doesn't die and instead turns into an enhanced werewolf. And the last time the two see each other is when the whole group watches Derek leave with Brayden. So that's the last season with Derek as a regular, and as a result, Derek doesn't have any moments till he returns in season 6. Well, except for one. In the season 5 premiere, when all the seniors gather to do some senior ritual of writing their initials on bookshelves I never understood high school culture. Styles sees the initials DH. Most likely not the actual initials Derek wrote in the shelves because I think it's implied that he dropped out of high school before he could do any senior class stuff because, you know, his family got murdered. But who else is Styles gonna think about here? So let's get to season six where Derek and Styles are both mostly not there because Tyler Hecklin is off doing other stuff while Dylan O'Brien in the first half was filming The Maze Runner and then the second half got into a stunt injury and needed several surgeries on his face before returning to work. You know, I thought it was because he no longer wanted to be on the show in the second half, but it's uh, good to know the real reason he was gone for most of it, I guess. The mid-season premiere of season six shows that Styles is training to be an FBI agent now, and at the start of one of his classes, the professor shows a video of a criminal that they are after which is Derek Hale running shirtless through the woods. Much to Styles' surprise. He's apparently wanted for mass murder. 
So now let's get to their actual return to Beacon Hills. In the middle of a fight, Styles runs over a hunter that's about to hit Scott. You didn't think you were doing this without me, did you? Without us? This was everyone's favorite moment from the season six beat trailer. They meet at the vet and Styles and Derek tell everyone about Derek being wanted by the FBI and Styles having to find him and save him. Derek says that's not what happened since he had to carry Styles out. <laughs> and uh, that's it. That is Derek. Uh, they both stand on either side of Scott during the slow motion walk at the end, but yeah, that's that that's it for Derek. Of the 63 episodes that Derek appears in, 31 have Steric moments. And a bunch of you probably just went, wow, that's practically half. But not exactly. See, I've split Steric episodes into four specific categories. Moments slash mentions for when they mention the other or the other isn't in the room for a moment. Interactions for when they do interact, but, you know, there's other people in the room. Alone for when there are one or two scenes together where it's just them. And finally, plot, where they have an entire subplot. For an episode, at least. So let's get into the math. Season 1 has seven steric episodes. Episode 1, they interact. Episode 2, they are alone. Episode 4 is a subplot, episode 6 is an interaction, episode 9 is a subplot, and episodes 11 and 12 are mentions. And the mentions count for less, especially in the earlier seasons, making the full steric count 5 out of 12. Less than half. Season 2, 4 out of 12 of the episodes are steric, and none of them are mentions. Episode 2, they're alone. Um, I don't really count this as a subplot because it's about two scenes. Uh, this is the episode where they have to break Isaac out of prison. Episode 4 is the subplot where they nearly die in the pool. Episode 8, they interact for about 30 seconds. And episode 10 is Fury where they're lying on the floor together for an extended period of time. I don't know if I count that as a subplot or an interaction. I think it's like, it's a mix of like interaction and alone. Season 3, I'm splitting into two so we can work under the same ratio. Season 3A has seven steric episodes. And just like season 1, two of them are mentions, however, Visionary is like probably the most steric heavy episode of the season despite them not actually interacting on screen, so I'm gonna count it as like a full episode, rounding the total up to six. Episodes 1 and 2 are interactions, episode 6 is a mention, episode 7 is an interaction, episode 8 is visionary, episode 10 is an interaction, and episode 11 they have a scene alone. This is officially the first season where half the episodes have steric in them. Season 3B, I'm gonna say now, I don't count Void's Styles and Derek interacting as steric moments because it's not actually Styles. But it does have five steric episodes, it's just that all of them are mentions except for the last one. Episodes 18 through 21 are mentions, but episode 24 is a dream sequence. Uh, I will say I do count dream sequence episode 24 and episode 18 as full steric episodes, just because 18 has like probably the full, you know, Derek is like there looking for styles the whole time and it takes up a majority of the episode well not necessarily Derek but like what he's doing and then you know what I'm throwing y'all a bone on that last one so yeah there's two episodes for Steric in season 3b two out of 12 <sighs> the least amount of Steric for a half a season until we get to you know the seasons where he's not there season four has five Steric episodes again Episode 1 is a mention, episode 2 they have a scene alone, episode 6 is an interaction, as well as episodes 11 and 12. I'm going to count the first episode mention as a full steric episode, so 5 out of 12, guys. I know season 5 has a moment, but it's pretty much 0 out of 20 on steric episodes this season. So season 6 were 2 out of 2 for steric moments. Of the episodes where they both appear in, 
they do in some way have a moment. Episode 11, where Styles sees Derek running shirtless through the woods, is a moment, and episode 20 is an interaction. So, this is the highest steric season by percentage, with 100%. <laughs> You get what I'm going for here, right? If you're only watching Teen Wolf for Steric, you're barely watching Teen Wolf. Of the 31 episodes where Steric happens, only 20 involve them actually interacting and talking to each other. And of those 20, 9 of them are alone. And of those 9, 3 of them are actual subplots and are about them. And how often do these alone moments happen? How often are Derek and Styles actually interacting alone together? How often are the big Steric episodes? Because they're not often there. I've said often like 20 times. All of the subplot episodes are in the first two seasons. And after that, Styles and Derek are almost never alone together. So despite how big Steric is in the fandom, it's not as big in the show itself. In fact, it's barely a main dynamic. So if there's actually not a lot of steric content in the show itself, and the relationship never evolves past them bickering, why is it so popular in the fandom? Having almost 70,000 works on AO3. God, my hair sucks right now. I think big Tumblr ships, especially ones created between 2012 and 2016, have sort of a mythos around them. That these huge ships were so close to being canon that it actually hurt. And when you look back on the media itself, very rarely are these characters that close. Which is a pretty common experience. A lot of the times when you're watching a show as it airs, you get so wrapped up in the actual, like, content and the fandom, you kind of get lost in it and end up forgetting what the actual canon is. I think the same thing is happening with like Steve Harrington and Eddie Munson right now. Like they were not two seconds from making out guys. Like I ship it, but like they barely interacted. And Steric is a result of something else as well. I'm going to call it a fandom Ouroboros. And if this term already exists, I did not invent it. Um, but also, if it has a different meaning, I'm sorry, I'll come up with something else to say what this means. A fandom Ouroboros is when a fandom becomes obsessed with one aspect from a piece of media to the point where it's all that they talk about. And as a result, it's the only thing that people who haven't seen that piece of media know about it. When those people actually start to watch that piece of media, they might start hyper-focusing on that aspect and looking for it at all points causing them to mostly only talk about it, feeding into the fandom already created around the work, leading to someone who has never seen the work getting into it via the aspects that the other person was obsessed with, and when they get into the work itself, obsessing over those aspects again, and the cycle continues. Steric was a big part of the fandom and was one of the first things I knew about Teen Wolf. There were gift sets everywhere on Tumblr, and as a result, I looked up Steric on YouTube before watching a single episode of the show. Like a lot of fandoms at the time and now, it was common for creators to edit together scenes from the show in gift sets to make it look like characters had interacted in an episode. While there are advantages to this, it can also end up tricking people into thinking that, you know, the scenes actually happened in the show itself. Steric fandom did this a lot, and one of the gift sets that I do remember is from the episode Illuminated, which someone had edited to make it look like Styles and Derek had interacted in the episode itself, but they don't. They never interact in this episode. So when I did finally get to that episode in the show itself, I was really confused. Like, was it a deleted scene or something? And then it's just like, oh, it's an edit. <sighs> Y'all have made me distrust gift sets. <laughs> As I said, many fans would talk about the steric moments, but sometimes they would only talk about the steric moments. I think it's akin to how 91 Lone Star fandom will talk about Carlos and TK every episode. Meanwhile, I'm just trying to figure out if Marjan was there by scrolling through the tag. 
All the top posts would be about Steric, no matter how small the interaction was. Or even if there wasn't an interaction. Remember how I said there's only one Steric moment in Season 5? While that's technically true for the fandom... Uh... The season 5 premiere where Styles sees the DH was probably the most gift moment from the season 5 premiere. But again, it's the season 5 premiere which sets up the season going forward and that's all anyone wanted to talk about. There was a tribute to Allison in that episode and that was all anyone was like, yo, yo, the steric moment, that's what we need to focus on. But the next episode, Scott points out to Styles that Styles doesn't really give people the benefit of the doubt and uses Derek as one of the examples. People immediately took to gifting Styles' reaction to Scott saying Derek's name, despite the fact that it doesn't really look that different from everyone else's name he reacts to. But people gift it alongside a bunch of Steric moments, which isn't uncommon in fandom. You say one half of your OTP's name in front of the other half, and suddenly there's a bunch of gift sets of, like, them reacting alongside a bunch of moments. It's, it's just a thing. But still, there was more to this episode than just that moment, but that's all anyone talked about. Staring Phantom also read into everything, and I'm not knocking analysis, it just might be a little bit reaching a lot of the time. Again, it's not a steric only thing, it's just, I have to talk about it, you know? The two moments from before I already talked about, but let's talk about the scene at the end of season four where Derek is dying. Not gonna lie, if Derek had died, I would have been so pissed. I think he's my favorite Teen Wolf character. While I don't blame anyone for reading anything into a scene with their OTP, Nothing about this scene necessarily indicates it's romantic, or at least that romantic is the only interpretation of it. The text of the scene is this. Derek gets attacked by a berserker, and Brayden, Derek's girlfriend, shoots at it till it runs off. She then goes to his side, and we see reaction shots from Styles and Peter. Peter asks how bad it is, and Derek insists that he's fine and yells for them all to get Scott. Styles pauses for a moment, and Derek tells him to save Scott. Styles pauses again and looks back to Derek one last time before following everyone else. Now, who are all the characters in this scene? We have Styles, Derek, Brayden, Peter, Malia, and Liam. Of the five characters who aren't Derek, two of them aren't given reaction shots to him getting hurt. Liam had only met Derek once before this episode, and he didn't have a close relationship with him. Malia, who doesn't have a close relationship with him and he might not even be aware is his cousin, also only had one bonding episode and they didn't get that close through it. Of the three who get reaction shots, Brayden is Derek's girlfriend who shoots off the berserker and runs to his side to make sure he's okay. Peter is Derek's uncle who is visibly distressed at seeing Derek hurt but has to go do some evil shit so he runs off with everyone else. And Styles is probably his third closest relationship on the show of the people who are left. Actually, Brayden might be higher up on that list. I think, uh, I think they spend enough time together this season that you can argue that. But why would Styles get this little extra reaction if it wasn't romantic or, you know, anything deeper? And that's very simple. Styles was there when Lydia found out that Derek might die. He thinks that's what's going to happen. And out of context, you can easily interpret this as romantic, and you can do it in context, but with the actual full context of the scene where Styles knows that Derek dies, it's... you can just as easily not read it that way. And this follows for a lot of steric scenes. Hell, every trailer was interpreted to somehow be connected to Steric. But when people post their own interpretations of the scene and they get incredibly popular, it's not hard to get wrapped up in the whole shebang of it all. To not read everything as romantic. But there's another scene that very often gets read as romantic, especially within the context of Teen Wolf. 
Let's talk about the dream sequence. One aspect of the werewolves in Teen Wolf is that sometimes they need anchors, which is something they can use to help control their werewolf abilities on the full moon. For Scott, it was Allison before his mom told him that he had to be his own anchor. Derek's anchor has been anger, but as the seasons went on and Derek became less angry, a lot of people thought that he might have a new anchor. A revolving aspect in the early parts of season 3B was dreaming, and each of the three main characters having to find anchors in the real world to keep them grounded. So now Teen Wolf fandom has tied anchors to dreaming. Anchors are also tied to romance because Scott and Allison. So how does Derek having a dream about talking to Styles get interpreted by the fandom? That Styles is Derek's anchor. I don't think that's necessarily the case because there would have been more build up to it. Or you know not, I never said Teen Wolf was like peak writing. Especially in the season itself. Most of Derek's season 3B stuff that involves Styles is about him trying to get rid of the Nagitsune. And previous seasons don't give off the idea that Styles grounds Derek and helps him with his werewolf abilities. I think this season is just doing a full circle from the beginning of the season, as Styles was always the one to tell people how they can tell if they're dreaming. And probably because Dylan and Tyler missed working together. So despite the lack of Steric in the show itself, the fandom circling around things has caused it to become a big juggernaut. And yeah, that happens in every fandom, but normally they're not the most written ship for in the AO3 tag. They're like, they might make it into the top 10, but very rarely. This is an outlier and should not be counted. Alright, time to explain what queer baiting is because for some reason you're an internet fandom and uh, have never heard of the term before. Queer baiting is when a piece of media will hint at or make promises of LGBTQIA representation in a work but not actually plan on depicting it in the work itself. Sorry I sounded like a robot there, I think I've said that like 4,000 times on this channel. I think queerbaiting is a term overused by fandom, and most of the time when they do use it, it typically just means, why didn't my ship become canon? Which, like, mood. Like I said, I've talked about this like a million times on this channel. I've got a couple of videos about it. Uh, just know that Steric gets called queerbait a lot. Now, the biggest thing people point to for Steric being queerbait is a video from Comic-Con where Tyler Hecklin and Dylan O'Brien sleep on each other and mention that Teen Wolf is up for a Teen Choice Award. Ooh. <laughs> Tyler. Yeah. Wake up. Wow. We're on a ship. Pun intended. <laughs> Whoa. Hey, man. Hey, buddy. Looking at this video years later, it is clearly a joke, and not just because Steric didn't become canon. The actors are clearly not being serious, and the pun intended was clearly put in to have fun with the fandom. Unlike a lot of actors, when there's a big giant ship on a show, Dylan and Tyler actually like Steric. They'll willingly answer Steric questions at cons and accept Steric gifts from fans. But this is the only thing about Steric where I go, okay, yeah, that, that, that's probably queerbait. Because every other time when people yell that Steric is queerbait, they don't actually provide its examples. They just go, it's queerbait. Hey, that scene of Derek pushing Styles up against the wall is bait. Despite the fact that that was season one, and no one knew that people would end up shipping Styles and Derek because of that scene. So I'm gonna go over the scenes that I think most people use as examples of, like, Steric being queerbait. Get him off of me. Oh, I don't know, Derek. I think you two make a pretty good pair. This, I think, is more of a nod to the fans to say, hey, we know you shipped the two, here's a little moment. And yes, there's a difference between like giving nods to the fans and queer baiting. Queer baiting is more than just a single line. So what's your name? Miguel. Yeah. It's by my cousin Miguel. 
from Mexico. So. If fans didn't like the original scene so much, yeah, they probably wouldn't have put it in the show itself again, but this is more used for comedy than actually teasing anything about their relationship. I want tea. Tea is good for my soul and my throat. That was too hot. <laughs> Out of the whole Teen Wolf pack, Styles is the closest to Derek besides Scott. And Scott got the Allison tribute, so who else is gonna get the Derek one? And I already talked about the dream sequence. And outside of these moments, I've never seen anyone pull anything that says this is bait. And I don't even consider these moments bait. Just some small nods to the fans, and nothing would change about Styles and Derek's relationship if you took them out. Because for those who claim bait, how would you write Derek and Styles if they weren't setting up a romance? I really can't think of how else you'd write it. But there is queer baiting in Teen Wolf, and it was the reason I ended up watching the show. But it wasn't this. <laughs> Or this. So, oh. Just say one word. Oh, what? You mean like, hey, Dad, Derek Hale's in my room. Bring your gun? Or this. <laughs> None of that made me want to watch Teen Wolf. But this? I thought you liked girls. I do like girls. Do you? Absolutely. Great. So you also like boys? Absolutely. Do you? I said I love you. Dead. So yeah, there's queer baiting in Teen Wolf, but it's not because of Styles and Derek. It's just Styles himself. His offense at his dad saying that he couldn't be gay, his need to have Danny like him, him actually considering it when Danny jokingly offers to have sex with him. That's the stuff that's queer bait. Now, every ship is controversial to someone. And Steric has a controversy that's kind of obvious. Now, you'll notice that the series is called Teen Wolf, and that most of the cast, aside from the parents, are teens. Emphasis on most of. Because you might have noticed during my recap, I said the phrase, Derek as a teenager. Derek's not a teenager in this show. And Styles is either 15 or 16 at the start of the series. <laughs> I, I, I shouldn't have to explain anymore, but uh, I'm going to. So Derek's age is up for debate because of some weird things, like the original pilot script had him 19, but then there's like the driver's license that lists him as 23. But this license is a fake, so it's not actually his birthday. Derek had to kill his girlfriend Paige when he was, like, 15, I think it was, and that was six years prior to the start of the series. But this also would have been around the time he met Kate, and because of some weird math thing, he was supposed to be, like, 18 when and Julia technically fucking died. And as a result, that's also when the hellfire happened. I've just been accepting Derek's age as 23. It's easier for everyone if you just do that. And no matter what Derek's age is, Derek is still an adult throughout the whole series, and Styles doesn't turn 18 till season 6. And no, people did not start shipping Styles and Derek the second Styles turned 18. It was prior to that, I know. I was in the fandom, guys. And because of that, we also need to get into the second biggest controversy of Steric. So, do you ever watch something and it's like, it's saying something, but it doesn't hit you what that thing is saying until the series is over. 
Yeah, it wasn't until years later and doing research for this video that I realized, oh, Derek's a victim of sexual assault. After Paige died, Derek met Kate Argent, who was an adult at the time, and she manipulated him into a sexual relationship so that she could use him to kill his whole family. And in a scene in the first season, he is tortured and licked by her, which also involved her taunting their relationship. There's this really weird moment in season two where Erica jumps on him and starts making out with him without his consent and he pushes her off, telling her to never do that again. When he asks why, he says that he has someone else in mind for her. Honestly, his answer should have been, you're 16. Then in season three, he's in a relationship with Jennifer and they seem to have a good time until it's revealed that she's evil and poisoned his little sister for leverage. Then is kidnapped by Kate, who de-ages him to 17 and makes out with him. A 30-year-old woman making out with a 17-year-old. Basically, Derek has a lot of sexual and romantic trauma and this show never deals with it properly. They make comments like, oh, Derek's ex when referring to Kate Argent and Maybe X isn't the correct word. The correct word might be the woman who statutory raped him. The fandom knows that Kate and Derek are wrong. They know that Kate being an adult and Derek being a teenager is gross. So why are so many people okay shipping Sterek despite it also being a teenager and someone in their 20s? Because it's gay. There are a large amount of shippers that refuse to ship anything involving a woman. This isn't relegated to just shipping men with women, but we don't have time right now to go over how fandom treats the idea of queer women. But people will ship anything from pedophilia to incest as long as it involves two guys. This is a mix of misogyny and fetishism, and it's super high in the Teen Wolf fandom. On AO3, Steric is the most written ship for both characters and the most written ship in the Teen Wolf tag. Based on what happens in the show, what do you assume the next most written ship would be? Well, people really like Styles, and his most favorite canon ship is him and Lydia, so maybe that? Or people really liked Scott and Allison, so that's a possibility. People also tend to ship best friends a lot, so Scott and Styles? Oh wait, Theo and Liam, they were a super popular ship by the end. They, it must be them. Well, you're all wrong because it's Styles and Peter. Derek's uncle, who is the villain for the first and fourth seasons and barely interacts with Styles. Great. So yeah, this is worse. Like, no one would ship this if Styles was a girl. No one would ship Styles and Derek if Styles was a girl. Because of scenes like this. Start of the car. Or I'm gonna rip your throat out. With my teeth. Or this. Oh, God, what the hell? Is you know what that was for. Or because Derek is an adult and Styles is a teenager. And for some reason, people can only recognize the negatives once one of them's a girl. And I did mention fetishization, so let's go into that. Do LGBT people ship Steric? Yes. Do LGBT men ship Steric? Yes. Would I say it's a majority of the people who ship Steric? No. A lot of queer male Teen Wolf fans didn't like Steric or the fandom for a variety of reasons. They didn't like the fandom because they would point out negative things about Steric and the fandom wouldn't listen. And the reason they didn't like Steric... You know the movie Call Me By Your Name? I don't need to tell you the full story, but it revolves around a romance between a 17-year-old and a 24-year-old set in the 80s. The film has been heavily criticized over the years for romanticizing a relationship between a character that is portrayed by 31-year-old Armie Hammer and 21-year-old Timothy Chalamet. Chalamet's character was often depicted very much as a child, making it even more uncomfortable. One extremely negative stereotype for LGBT people that continues to be paraded around by homophobes is that if you're gay, they're also automatically pedophiles or that they're trying to seduce children. And when a film comes out about a relationship between an adult and a teenager, it adds to a certain homophobic narrative. 
There were a lot of straight people who saw Call Me By Your Name as a romance, but queer people rightfully pointed out all the negatives fueled by the movie, making more examples for homophobic people to use against them. Despite how many people yelled that Steric would be good for queer rep, they very rarely listened to the queer men who pointed out that it wouldn't be. And this isn't just a problem with Steric, it's an overall fandom problem. A lot of women will ship two guys together, and when queer men point out that they feel fetishized and uncomfortable, they'll ignore them. I'm not saying every woman who ships two guys together is automatically doing it because they fetishize queer men, but they might not realize that they're making queer men uncomfortable when they do it, and that it comes across as fetishization. There have been queer men who ship things like Stucky but have backed out of the fandom due to the fact that they felt that the fandom was being fetishistic and made them really uncomfortable. Honestly, the best way it's been summarized is in the final episode of 50% Off. Fetishizing gay men isn't actually supporting a homosexual relationship as something normal. If anything, it detracts from their efforts, and you can gussy it up all you want, but you still refer to it as stuff like sinning. Huh? But I love gay guys. So you say stuff like, all gay guys are the same. I ain't like every other gay guy. I don't even consider myself a gay person, but I'm dating another man. That's my main bitch right there. Hello. Gay guys aren't all hard eyes cutes as ships. They have issues, relationship troubles, mental illness, and things that keep them from being happy. They're people, man, not a commodity for you to collect and flick your bean to. But instead of thinking about it that way, you have people yelling homophobe anytime a queer man points out that they feel uncomfortable by a fan and ship, or even if they just don't like it. Another big reason that queer men didn't like Steric is that a lot of people pushed it as what should be the queer rep in Teen Wolf over the actual queer rep in Teen Wolf. First we have Danny, who is slightly antagonistic with Styles, and it's funny every time. He is gay right from the start and eventually gets a boyfriend, Ethan, one of the antagonists of Season 3, who eventually gets redeemed. Ethan leaves Beacon Hills at the end of Season 3, and after they break up, Danny is never seen again. Then in Season 4, we are introduced to Liam's friend Mason, who is openly gay, and eventually gets his own boyfriend, Corey, who is a chimera, and they stay together for the rest of the show and even plan on going to the same college. Then there's Jackson, which opens up a whole can of worms that I don't want to get into. There's also Brett, who I'm not gonna lie, I don't remember all that much. But despite their canon queer rep, Steric fans didn't want that. They wanted Steric. Which, not gonna lie, it might be tied to racism because two out of three of the queer couples in this show have men of color in them. The fetishism and racism has led people to attacking one particular actor, and now I have to address the thing I didn't want to address. On February 14th, 2014, Hollywood Life posted an interview with Holland Roden, Tyler Hecklin, and Tyler Posey. In it, the interviewer asks Hecklin about Derek's love life and who says that Derek is taking a break from the ladies in the second half of season three. The interviewer then mentions how people ship Styles and Derek and asks how they feel about it. What, Steric? Yeah. I think Steric is a bizarre, weird, twisted thing, <laughs> and I think that anyone who pays more attention to Steric than the show um, isn't watching the show for the right reasons. So, uh, the fandom didn't take it very well. The kindest people said that Posey probably just didn't understand fandom and was confused about the whole thing. Others said that he was just mad that people were paying more attention to Steric than his own character, Scott. And the worst people said that he was homophobic and sent him threatening messages, including one saying that they were glad his mom died. And years later, these people look like idiots because Tyler Posey came out as queer. While not the only queer actor on the show, he is the one playing the main character and has been asked a lot of questions over the years. And it's not too far of a stretch to suggest that he and every other actor on the show has been asked about Steric a lot. And this was probably his breaking point. Because of all the things to constantly ask about Teen Wolf, especially in Season 3B when this has happened, this is probably the most annoying. 
But also, Posey's kind of right. If he's just annoyed that everyone's paying attention to a ship over his character, you would be annoyed too if you were playing the main character and all anyone wanted to talk about was whether or not your two co-stars were going to make out. But also... And I think that anyone who pays more attention to Steric than the show um, isn't watching the show for the right reasons. Is correct. Like I said earlier, if you watch Teen Wolf just for Steric, you're barely watching Teen Wolf. Also, maybe you should listen to what the queer actor has to say about the Fanon queer ship. But he doesn't hate Styles and Derek. He willingly answers questions years later about the relationship. He just doesn't ship it. And I think he was just done with constantly getting asked about it and just straight up said, hey, it's not gonna happen. I think that covers all the controversies. Oh, also Derek hits Styles a lot. I'm so not buying your threats anymore. Oh my god, okay. Whoa! God, what the hell is- Gather enough force to punch through solid- Ah! Yeah, that covers it. As I was writing this, I looked through my own personal Tumblr seeing all the gifs and posts I had reblogged about Steric when Teen Wolf was on. And I kind of got sucked into it. I was just getting that oh my ship feeling instead of thinking critically about it. And I still like Styles and Derek's interactions. Almost every scene where they're alone together is really funny. And when they reunite after spending two seasons apart and immediately settle back into their dynamic, it's really fun and comforting. It's one of the highlights of the season six finale. I haven't laughed that hard at the show in a good three seasons. So was Steric ever close to becoming canon? No. Far from it. My personal interpretation of their relationship is this. Styles finds Derek attractive, but would in no way ever want to be romantically involved with him. Because while I will say they get to a point where they care enough about each other to not want to see the other hurt or dead, it never feels like they like each other. Like they would ever go out of their way to hang out or talk to each other if it wasn't about all the werewolf stuff. It's not so much of a friendship as it is two people who are in the same friend group. And again, their scenes are really fun, but they're so spaced out from each other and they never get to a point where it feels like they're anywhere close to being a couple. I watch a show called 911, which has its own big fanship in the form of Buck and Eddie. And after an episode, I saw a user say that they thought that Buddy was so close to being canon that it was on the same level as Steric. Now, keep in mind everything I told you about Steric. Here's a Buddy compilation. Okay, that is a beautiful man. That. Look, there's nobody in this world I trust with my son more than you. I'd still take you. You think so? I know. You want to go for the title? Hey, just for real. You stay with me, okay? Requesting a trauma unit to Are you hurt? Be a firefighter with a gunshot. No, no, no. I'm good. You just hang up. Hey, come on! Come on! Why, well, you said you did this last year. Why are you just telling me now? Because, Evan, you came in here the other day and you said you thought it would have been better if it had been you who was shot. You act like you're expendable. But you're wrong. I mean, Styles and Derek have never even hugged, and y'all are comparing it to two people who are practically raising a child together. Are you a bad person if you ship Steric? No. But if you still ship it all these years later, maybe there's some things you should keep in mind about it. 1. Steric did not make up a majority of what happened in the Teen Wolf show. 2. 
Styles and Derek got to a point where they care about each other, but it's never as close as fanfic makes it out to be. 3. It's not as big a queerbait as people make it out to be. 4. Maybe listen to queer male fans when they say they are uncomfortable with something you ship. And 5. With the Teen Wolf movie coming out and people already saying that, this is how Sterek can still win despite Dylan O'Brien not being in the movie unless he's pulling an Andrew Garfield, maybe keep your expectations low and don't get mad when Sterek isn't in it. You know, if someone told me that they were making Sterek canon in the movie and I had to be the one to pick how it would be canon, I would choose that they were divorced. <laughs> Because it would be funny, and I need a second November 5th in my life. The queen dying didn't cut it, guys. <laughs> no ship went canon. Thank you all for watching. What are your thoughts on Steric nowadays? Do you ever look at a ship and think, yes, that is definitely a Phantom Ouroboros? Let me know. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe as well. Special announcement, if y'all get me to 1,000 subscribers, I'm going to do an Earth 27 live stream. For those that know what Earth 27 is, you're going either, oh no, or oh yeah. And to those that are confused, you can Google it and be horrified. <laughs> Anyways, again, thank you all for watching. I will see you all next time.